Multiple sclerosis is a degenerative disease that affects the body on a cellular level. Neurodegeneration of the myelin sheath results in disruptions of neurotransmissions along the central nervous system. This unique disease requires a multifactorial approach beyond what traditional medicine currently provides. An approach that examines each individual on a cellular level and their exclusive circumstances, such as the impact and history of environmental toxins on the body, correcting nutritional and hormonal deficiencies, as well as the brain-gut connection, treating the body as a whole on a cellular level and leaving nothing out. We are Scala Precision Health, and today we sat down with Pete and Don Corelli to discuss our one-of-a-kind treatment protocol for multiple sclerosis. Hey folks, today we're here with Pete and Don Corelli. We're going to talk about Pete's evolution uh, with multiple sclerosis, and we're going to uh, see if we could drill down on some new treatment protocols for him. How you doing, Pete? Good. How are you doing, Russ? Good, good. good tell, tell us about um, your, your history with this. Well, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1995. So it's 21 years. Uh, at the point of when I was diagnosed, I was thought I had the world going great. I was feeling, I mean, everything was good. And I was suffering for a few years of weakness and, and clumsiness and uh, optical neuritis. Those are the first signs? Were the first signs. Sensitivity to heat, uh, numbness in the hands, and then I lost the vision of my left eye, optical neuritis. And, uh, it started moving pretty fast, and I was diagnosed in 95 after going to a whole bunch of doctors and this and that, and was told, don't worry about it. I'm a young male and I'm strong, nothing's really, it won't really do too much to you. To, as you can see now, I'm 52 now and I'm in a wheelchair, and I have a very rapidly progressive form of multiple sclerosis. And uh, I've done all the treatments, from starting from the interferons, to chemotherapy, to all kinds of medication, and uh, I'm progressing. And conventional medication has helped tremendously in certain ways. What have you noticed with the conventional medication? Um, it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. Less side effects with the newer. The old ones used to really uh, put me out of commission for days. I got you. And I was still working full time, and I'm a, I was a young dad. So I was you were working, working as a police officer full-time working, when you had this? Still working. I worked my whole career with, you know, 10 years with multiple sclerosis with the police department in New York. And then being a dad. And my body was just getting worn down and broken down. And all the medications they gave me helped slow it down, but didn't help me with any of the symptoms of any of the, the strength and the weakness and the loss of uh, functions. Gotcha. And... Uh, and I was just told basically to keep a you know positive attitude, which I did. But it's hard to keep positive when you, you you know you're losing your ability to do certain things. You see a little progress and then you fall back. You know that's one of the things that we see anytime I have families going through something like this. There's a new study. There, there's a study of a, a a new field called psychoneuroimmunology, and what we what we're learning is just you thinking there's no way out lowers your immune system. So. In the, in the progress of the disease. Um, very confusing. The lesions in the scar tissue in the brain and the cervical spine have not gotten worse, but yet my disability has gotten so, worse. So you're getting more disabled and the lesions are remaining the same size? Correct. When he gave me the backstory, when I, when I was doing the backstory on you guys, and Pete was telling me he went from, you know, a cane, you know, to crutches, to a walker, to a wheelchair, you know, that, that, that's a progression, and, I, and I'm thinking, well, you know, what is the multifactorial things that traditional medicine didn't look at? That's what the way my mind works. And then drilling down on, you know, remyelinization, myelinization, what, who are the people that are walked out of this, and, and what was their treatment protocol? So, I, I, you know, I'm dropped into the second act of a third act play here. Mm -hmm. um, cops, firemen, war veterans, a special place in my heart for you guys. Mm -hmm. So drilling down on this, that, that's why we're doing the advanced testing. There's other areas that we could look at that, um, that they didn't look at in, in your history. You know, you have one doctor saying one thing, another doctor saying another, and everything, and never the minds are meeting. 
and stuff and, and that's it as, as you're saying along the line is you know if you take you know uh, psychologically and um, you know your your diet and, and, and different protocols that you use and you combine them all together and everything like that is definitely something that would you know I mean work to an advantage. When people get that diagnosis with MS and they feel like there's no way out and I want to show that there, there are options. Real research that we'll put together here that they could use to help themselves. Talk about um, um, the chemotherapy. Well, the one what I'm the treatment I'm on now is the uh, what I've chosen is called Tazabri, and it's a form it's a light form of chemotherapy. It's every 28 days. It's an infusion. It's really slowed down what I thought was the progression of the disease of scar tissue lesions of that in the brain and the cervical spine. But I've been on it for 10 years now, and when I started it, I was still walking with a cane, and 10 years later, um, in a wheelchair, and I have no hand, I don't have functions of my hands. You have gotten progressively worse Why? while you've been on this low-dose chemo. Progressively worse in symptoms, but no new scar tissue in the brain or the, or the cervical spine. Prior to this medication, even though I was on the interferons and the injections that were protocol for MS in the early 90s and all, I still was averaging probably once to twice a year with major exacerbations and being hospitalized with high dosage of steroids to get me through. So the steroids would knock out the inflammation? Yes, and bring me and get me back to a ground zero, but then I would start again. Yeah, you know? the, the steroids that you were taking were also damaging your... HPA axis, your your thyroid, your adrenal glands, yeah, and lower all your hormone levels. Yes, you know so that's that that that's another area that we're looking into correcting now for Pete. This low dose chemotherapy to Sabri, what else do what else do they use that for? I think people they treat people with Crohn's disease with it. I think. Um, yeah, lupus. I think, some you know, people with lupus. So they so they use yeah. autoimmune diseases. Yeah. For yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. yeah. So so they're thinking if I've my if I'm my thinking is right. By this low dose chemotherapy, the doctor that you're talking about this, it's going to lower the immune system enough so it doesn't attack the myelin sheath, exactly. the covering, the covering that goes over every nerve. They're thinking that this chemotherapy, low dose to Sabri, slows the deterioration or the demyelinization of the myelin sheath. Mm. What it that, does is it tricks the white blood cells from not going out and attacking the. Uh, the my well, yeah, because so and, and and that's the question. That's why we did this other testing. Why are your muscles and why are you having denervation? Why are you progressively, even though there's no lesions on the brain or your spinal cord, why why is this progressing? Why is the, are you having muscle wasting? Is it is it tied to nutritional deficiencies? Is it looked at? You know, is is it um, toxic things in the environment? One of the things folks that Pete told me about in the beginning when I was doing his discovery is that he worked um, with pesticides um, on a golf course. MS is tied to a lot of toxins in the environment. I don't think anybody's looking at this, but the testing that we're doing on Pete is going to look at something called oxidative stress and another, it's a long word, it's something called 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine and that we're going to measure a urine sample that's going to show us is the DNA being impacted by external toxins. Has any any other docs considered the pesticides at all? Not one. Not one. When you look at MS, MS is multifactorial, and the environment, we know that clusters of people in different parts of the United States where there's a high amount of toxins end up with MS. We also know that women, during pregnancy, their symptoms go away. Why is it? So why aren't the doctors looking at a hormonal? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at. Why aren't they looking at a toxic? Sort of makes sense. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody picked up the phone today and, and said, Russ, I have MS, what would you do? I go, first of all, let's think about any toxins in the area. Let's run a urine sample to see if you picked up any toxins. Where do you live? Are you next to a toxic waste dump? I don't know. Are you spraying insecticides? I don't know. And let's, let's get a hormonal test done and look at your fluctuating hormonal levels. I mean, just off the top of my head, I would do that. There were three people, two women and everything like that, that specifically on the same street that Peter grew up on and everything. I mean, the house that we rented at a point in time, the girl that lived in that house has MS also. You know, she we has MS. We all grew MS up on a block within 30 yards of each other and three people in one neighborhood, multiple sclerosis. You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about, the cluster. Was there something in that neighborhood that was ground zero? And Trent and I, remember we worked with Trudy Reed, the Bethune-Cookman College president, 
Trudy Reed was, um, just to digress a little bit, but a good example, Trudy Reed was having bizarre symptoms. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody knew what it was. She went to all these physicians. Then as a college president, she had access to the best physicians in the United States. Well, we did some testing and we drilled inside the walls and there was aspergillus black mold that was causing all her symptoms mm -hmm. and they evacuated everybody from the building. You know, so again, even with the college president, with all her collect, you know, connections, nobody was thinking about the environment. But before they even becoming a police officer in New York was, I worked in uh, construction. And, uh, buildings that we were just, you know, doing demolition to and things were buildings that were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And I know now, I didn't know then, that in the, in the concrete they would throw asbestos in there or any kind of chemicals or whatever. And I was jackhammering through 15 inches of concrete at seven inches. I'd have to get the torches out and burn through the rebar. We had no respirators. And I was in a basement of one building for six months doing floor demolition. Jeez. And, all, and we had no windows. And all I wore was a bandana. So as you're talking about chemicals and dust, I, I inhaled so much concrete dust. And I mean, I'm not saying that what, what caused it, but... No, but it's a contributing factor, you know what I'm saying? When you think about no physician, no MS physician right now that I know of, and I, and I know some of the best neurologists in the country, are looking at the e external environment, how it's damaging the, the myelin sheath. Nobody's looking at that. And your history has been focused on a lot of external environments. Whether it damaged your neurological system or not, you're, what you're telling me is it was, it was added stress to your physiology, to your antioxidant system that may have made you susceptible. Nobody ever went back and asked me, anything about my previous history of jobs. And I've always worked outside, and I've always been in the elements, and you know, you think that's a great thing because you worked outside, but I did a lot of things. Medicine has a saying, it's called Occam's razor. They like to break everything down to the least common denominator, but I think in this situation, it was multiple things that led up to this, and now we're looking at those multiple mm -hmm. things. You know what I'm saying? Folks, let me give you an example. Um, this is a wire, and there's a plastic covering over this wire as you can see, okay? Now I want you to think about this wire as a nerve cell in Pete's body. The plastic covering around this nerve cell is called a myelin sheath, okay? Multiple sclerosis is a, coll a collection of symptoms that break up or demyelinate this plastic covering so electrical chemical messengers can't travel up and down. So when Pete's moving, if this plastic covering is damaged, then the electrochemical messengers are not going to travel and he won't be able to move his hand. Obviously, demyelinization has taken place over a period of years. His recent drug therapy he's on right now is, suppo is supposed to stop the progression of demyelinization or this plastic covering unraveling. Our treatment protocols, what we're looking at, is a multifactorial approach that impacts the myelin sheath. We're looking at what it's made up of, essential fatty acids. We're looking at oxidative stress. Did the insecticides damage this? We're gonna be able to look at that. What are the hormones that help with remyelinization? This multifactorial treatment protocol that has not been done or looked at in, in, in Pete's metabolism is, is the area that we're going down. Folks, it's been about two months Pete's been on the program. We're waiting on more advanced testing to come back. Pete, tell us how you've been feeling. I'm feeling really good. I said it's, it's big change in my body and the big change in the last more than in years that I've felt this way by following your medical protocol and your supplements and all uh, I'm sleeping really good at night I'm getting a good seven to eight hours of sleep at night I have more energy during the day I'm not falling asleep during the day um, I've lost 20 pounds close to 20 pounds in the diet um, I've been stronger at the gym when I, you know, I work out at a gym with a personal trainer. I've said my, my, my reps have gone up. My nice. weight have increased in the lift, you know, and, the, the, uh, and my exercises have gotten a lot better. Um, and my mind has been clear. I really feel, I feel better. And, and I'm seeing, you know, the start of something that I, I I'm very excited about. That's good, man. That's good. And, and, and we did, we're just getting started. So, so this multifactorial treatment protocol and the feedback you're giving me is just going to help thousands of people, I, I believe. Because, I mean, if you haven't felt this way in 20 years, all we're doing is taking research that's already out there. I didn't develop this. I just pulled some research together. I have a great research lab and team of doctors around me. So I'm like, let's look at this and test it on Pete and let's, and let's plug in what he needs here. 
So that that that's exciting, and the feedback I'm getting right now, Pete, I know I'm going to be able to help a lot of folks. We are. We're going to and help a lot of folks. Russ, with this, I mean, my pain. I always, I'm always, and I don't mean to sound, you know, complaining about myself. I always have a pain level, but because of the treatment and what we've been doing in the early stages, my pain level has been lowered. Mm, that's cool. Uh, the throbbing and the spasms and the tremors have gotten a little less. And like you said, it's only been a few months. And I'm very, you know, I'm looking, my wife Dawn and I are just looking forward for wherever we go. Folks, this treatment protocol that we're designing for Pete um, can help elderly folks as well, because we're looking at the brain in real time right now. We're looking at the brain nutritionally and hormonally, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. You got a family member that has one of those diseases and you're getting taken down a road or you're not getting answers, this protocol we're designing for Pete, you know, will help you. And uh, that's what we're about here at Scallop Precision Health. We want to get information into your hands. That's why we created the Russ Scallop YouTube channel. Maybe you'll see something in one of our videos that'll resonate with you and you can tell somebody. That's what we need to do to change medicine, folks. Thanks for watching. Everybody and everybody has a story. Let us find out yours today.